Good afternoon. Well, that's different. It's usually good morning, but good afternoon. Chuck here at Garden Spot Acres. We're continuing on here with video eight of our tiny house log cabin build. And we left off the other day. I was working on the, uh, the course of right at the window level. And now I'm starting the course above the windows. And I got the back wall course here in. That took a little doing because the wall, when you're starting putting these pieces in between the windows, and she starts doing a little twisting. So we had to bring that wall back. So I took a nice straight timber. We laid it up here. I attached it here on the end. I attached it down there on the end. And then I brought these parts to the timber. So everything's nice and square now. And we can look right down that wall. I don't know if you can see that or not, but she's nice and straight. So we're almost ready to put this one on here. But I'm going to put this one on. i got to overlap the edge. I'll just leave it loose here on this end. Then I can get a measurement for this one. Put that one on. And then we're going to have to straighten this wall out. I'm going to get up here on a ladder in a second and show you that. We also left off the other day when I was putting this little sliver in. And you can see that here. That raised this piece of the course up above the window frame just almost the same as this one over here so now i can run this right across here here's the one i put on off video on the back wall it's really straightened that out really well now let's take a peek down this one here can you see how much wiggle there is there It looks good here, then it starts coming out there, then it goes back in, then it comes around like a little loop there, and back out to the front. So we're going to have to run a nice straight course right down through here, a nice straight timber, and bring these walls to the timber. Through the wonders of technology, I lost three video clips. That showed the process on how we straightened this wall out. I had it all on video, but somehow that video disappeared. Well, all I did was simply put a two by. I attached this. I pulled all this wall over to that straight timber that I put up here. So that's all nice and straight now. Sorry that happened. I have no idea where those three video clips went, but they just disappeared. Now we're on the opposite wall doing the same exact thing. Now we got a lip out here. I got to draw that in and see if I can. And I should be able to do that with one screw, I hope. Let's put it right there. See if that doesn't force that one over. She did. Now I get my long one in. That looks pretty good down through there. Before we go any farther with our courses up here, I'm going to go ahead and take these back all these bolts out or all these lag screws out and countersink them. Some of them they would not countersink themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and countersink. Like this one here is fine. But I'm going to back them out, drill a one inch countersink, then put them back in. Now they're flush. We're working on the next course, which is also the first course where we start overhanging for the porch out in the front. And we start creating an overhang in the back for the overhang on the roof in the back. Okay, we got about 13 one. I want to overhang the back eight inches. That's 13 nine. And in the front for right now, two feet, 15 nine.
Check out the old square head nails. Oh, I can get 15, seven and a half out of the short one. Not only are we dealing with the overhangs with this course, we're also dealing with our floor joists for our loft. And our loft is gonna be seven feet long from back to the front. So when you walk in the front door, you're gonna have like a cathedral ceiling up. Then there's gonna be a loft right about there going across. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna space out four floor joists for the loft. We're gonna have one on the back that I'm gonna attach right to here, right to this back wall timber. And then we're gonna evenly divide up three more sections for our floor joists and we'll lay it out on our timbers that we already cut down to 15 seven and a half out here so we have 84 inches from the back to the front of the loft i have a three inch joist at the front a three inch joist at the back that's six inches from the 84 that brings me to 78 then i'm going to take 78 and i'm going to divide that into three equal sections That'll be 26. So I'm going to make a mark here at 26. One at 52. So we have 52. We have to go an inch and a half this way. Inch and a half this way. Next notch is going to be here at the... there to there so that's got to be taken out Now to get them up there without breaking them. Well, got it up there. Now he's got to go up there and attach it. And I'm not going to attach this um, so it's really, really tight right now. After I get this one on and the other one on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and put my floor joists in and make sure these have enough play in them so I can get the floor joists down into them. If I tighten them up now, it might be, just be too tight to get the floor joists down. I'm gonna make this entire span from this side to that side exactly the same as they are between here and there. So I'm gonna go outside and we're gonna get a measurement from there to there. And then I'm gonna add the inch and a half plus the other inch and a half and make my floor joists for the loft that way. We got 127 and three quarters. So my notches are one and a half inches. So 127 and three quarters plus three. 130 and three quarters. Huh, I got a piece of wood stuck down in there.
let's measure how wide this is it's three inches so they it should fit right in I got three there oh a little more than three here Let's keep our fingers crossed that this works. Up in the air we go. Oh, let's see how much we got to play around with here. Oh. <laughs> well, let me go get the impact driver and take this screw out right there and we'll take that one right there out then we'll drop it into place I hope there we go Got all three of the joists in. Still have to work on that wall over there to bring it back to flush on the outside. Over here we had a knot right where I need to put a lag screw. So we're gonna go ahead and drill that first. any problem moving this in to get it flush right here down there though she's I would say a half inch off so I think what I'm gonna have to do is go on the other side over there and I have to loosen all my lag screws that are holding that course on so to make this just a unit that I can move a little bit and square it up a little bit So I should be able to hit that back this way a little bit, I hope. Remember my whole goal here was to make sure that my courses from now on are the same distance apart all the way down through because my rafters are going to be pre-cut and I don't want to have to you know diddle around with the rafter so if this is all true down through here makes putting the rafters on a lot easier uh, about 133 and a half a little bit less i'm gonna push that out a little bit we're gonna put it in right there that gives me 133 and a half Okay, we got 133 and a half. Not bad. Well, I'm glad we took the time to make sure we were equidistant on our next course that we just put in with the floor joists in it. That's gonna make putting the rafters on so much easier that we're 130 and a half inches at that end at this end and all the way down through so now my rafters can be cut with a pattern 
and I don't have to deal with each one individually. That makes that a lot easier. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this course right here along the door in the front and along the back. That brings me up here. Then I got two more courses I'm gonna do on top of this. That's where we're gonna pick up the next video. We're gonna do a staggered porch end over here with the next two courses. We're gonna do the same thing on the back. I'm right now deciding how I want to uh, go about doing this because my next course usually would come across. But I really want to do the next two courses going up from here without doing the cross piece on top of this one, without doing the crisscross. So I'm going to think about doing half lap joints. I'll give that some thought tonight. But I'm happy with the progress we got here done today. Thanks for coming along on the video. I appreciate it. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Hit that like button, leave a comment. Tell me something I could have done differently, made it a little bit easier on myself. Well, hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.